So where we left off in the last video is that we got our Laravel application up and running by installing PHP and Composer and Nginx and configuring them, and then working through a quick permission issue so that Laravel could write to the directories that it needed to. The next thing I'm going to do is actually not really talk about the application specifically, but PHP. So configuration for PHP on Ubuntu and Debian servers is an SC PHP. And as of more recent versions, you'll typically have a version of PHP that we're talking about here. And we can see I have some directories in here, but I only have version 7.1 installed. So 7.1 and 7.0 are relatively empty. And then 7.1 has stuff in it. So let's go into the 7.1 directory. And then inside of here, we see we have configuration per SAPI. And SAPI is the server API, and it's the context in which that we are running PHP. So CLI is when we run PHP on the command line. FPM is when we run PHP through web requests. So PHP FPM is getting web requests from Nginx and running PHP through that. And if we installed Apache and we had Apache's mod PHP installed, we would probably see a directory in here named Apache 2. But I don't use Apache much, so you won't see that too much in my videos here. Although I do have a series that has us installing a LAMP stack with Apache as well, and then you'll see that in that case. Now, similar to Nginx, how we saw the sites available and sites enabled convention, we have mods available, and the mods available here are the actual module configurations for PHP. They're real files and so not symlinks. But if we head into CLI or FPM or whatever, let's do FPM first, we'll see inside of conf.d, we have a bunch of symlinks to the mods available directory. So this is the exact same convention PHP uses to enable or disable modules. Now, the other thing to note is that you can have different modules set for CLI and FPM run PHP. So you might have Xdebug off on CLI and on PHP FPM or vice versa. It all depends on what is enabled or disabled here. So I can actually go into PHP FPM and, well, let's do the CLI actually. If I do php-v, we'll see we have PHP and it has xdebug 2.5.5. If I head into the CLI directory and I can list out what's in conf.d, we have xdebug. Let's say I wanted to remove xdebug, I would head into the conf.d directory and I will just do sudo remove 20 xdebug. And because PHP in the CLI isn't something you have to restart to so I can change this, that'll be immediate. So xdebug is no longer on CLI. So if I wanted to bring that back, I would run sudo ln-s to create a symlink. So the ln command will create a symlink. And it is source and destination. So the source is the real file. So that'll be etsy, php, 7.1 mods available and the xdebug file. And of course we'll create that as the old file name it once was 20xdebug.ini. And we can list that out here and see that it's back. And I'll do php-v and we'll see that xdebug is back here as well. Now notice that the real file names don't have numbers but the fake ones, the symlinks do. That's because it'll load in alphabetical order here and the number system here is the easiest way to do that, starting with 10. So it'll first install my SQL ND and then off cache and then PDL, stuff that actually typically does have to get installed early. And then it'll do the rest of these. These are all at 20 because it doesn't matter uh, the order for these anymore. Ooh, and actually memcache is last year at 25. So you can set the order that modules will load it as well based on the file name here, based on the symlinks file name. Okay, so CLI and FPM can both have different modules installed and of course different php.ini values. So if you are running into errors where something on CLI works where something in web doesn't, you can always check to see if they have a different configuration for each SAPI, for each context. PHP is being run in. So the last thing I want to show you is that we do have some helper commands to enable and disable modules. So I could do sudo php disable the module and I'll do the help menu for this. I could do dash s for all or I could do dash s for a specific thing. So I could say dash s CLI and then uh, this is disable. So I can tell it to disable xdebug and I'll do php dash v and you see it's gone. And instead of dismod after that, we can do nmod to enable it for the CLI SAPI, and we'll see that it's back. And of course, we can do the same thing for FPM, or if I wanted this to affect all SAPIs, I could just do this without the dash s flag. That'll do for everything. Note that if you make a change to the FPM comp.d directory or the php.ini, you need to do sudo service php 7.1 or whatever version you have installed restart. You need to restart PHP FPM in order for it to know that there's a new module or an old module taken out or a change to PHP FPM. I believe reload will do it also. Reload should suck those changes in. So this is sort of handy if you want xdebug on or at least available in your production instance to turn on. So you can install it, it'll be enabled, and then you can do sudo php dismod xdebug in production to make sure it's off. 
and that will persist through a reboot. It'll remain off through a reboot. And if you ever want to turn it back on to do some debugging, if you ever need to in production for some reason, you can just re-enable it. So that's it for this. In the next video, I'm going to talk a little bit about PHP FPM and how the configuration in that works to listen for PHP requests and to control process management. In other words, how PHP FPM controls how many processes it spins up in order to serve web requests coming from Nginx into PHP.